Hi, I'm Jessamy and I paint rocks under the name Stained Stones. I'm going to introduce the craft in this video, just a quick demonstration and some information on what you need to get started if you want to try painting rocks yourself. In the video information I'm putting useful links to learn more. Let's get started. First of all, thank you very much to the Gamble Historic House and Garden in Palo Alto. They're currently displaying my rocks in their garden beds and you might be able to spot some if you go and have a look. It's a really great place to visit because it gives you some inspiration for possible rock painting subjects like flowers and plants and insects. But why paint rocks? Well, it's highly accessible you just need rocks and something to paint with. You may even have acrylic paint already at home and then all you need is a rock. The small canvas I find minimises the pressure so it's very easy to paint over them and begin again as well if you're unhappy with the design. It's fun for kids and it doesn't have to be very messy. It's also quite meditative or mindful to focus on just painting the rock. And if you do choose to place them outside, then it really brightens people's days to see them. Um, I found that I hear a, a lot from people um, who found one of my rocks um, and enjoyed seeing it out in the wild there. Uh, so I would really recommend thinking about doing that. So these are the rock borders that, where I started painting rocks. I picked up rocks from these decorative borders near my apartment and that became then a neighbourhood project um, as you see in the video. As my paintings got more complex I switched to using white Santorini stones instead of river rocks. Um, these are the white uh, rock stones you see here on my fence. So what I'm going to do is just paint a quick and easy design that you might like to try for yourself. And I'll talk a bit about the supplies that you, you need and that you might use and the pros and cons of those. So first you've got to select your stone. I'm looking here in the borders and I found a stone that looks nice and flat with a smooth surface. If you're not lucky enough to have somewhere local that you can just pick up rocks in the wild, um, you should also be aware that some places like national parks it would be illegal to take stones from. Then you can get to, go to your local craft shop or garden centre where they have uh, decorative stones for putting in gardens and they tend to be river rocks like this that are perfect for painting. You can also buy them on Amazon and if you look at the links in the information below this video there's some links there to how to buy them online. The flat white stones, the Santorini stones, they can be bought on Etsy and eBay. So I've got started here painting a ladybird. What I usually do is Google a photo of what I want to draw. A good tip for beginners is Google how to draw a ladybird in inverted commas and that will give you loads of styles for different um, types of ladybirds that you can draw with easy steps. So here you can see that I'm using an acrylic paint pen. I use pens for most of my artwork. If you do have just acrylic paints at home with brushes then you can absolutely use those and that's how I started. Um, you can also buy paint again craft shops and online um, you can find these pens, 12 uh, different colours, for about £20, uh, $20 I should say. Um, and the rocks are about a similar price for a bundle of, of rocks. Um, so you might be wondering whether you should go for pens or paints. I find that the benefits of pens are that you get these extremely sharp lines. Um, you don't need such a steady hand as you would for a brush to get those good lines. There's no tidy up, um, so this might be a nice one for doing with the kids. 
um, it's easier to use away from a table or desk so you can just sit with your pens on the sofa and, and work on rocks there. You also get the same colour every time from a pen. Now with paints you've got that ability to blend which you don't have with the uh, pens and you can create your own colours. The paint stream is also a bit more reliable you might notice in the uh, film here I'm occasionally have to press down up and down on the nib to get the paint flowing again. A final benefit of the um, brush uh, paints is that it's easier to cover larger areas. So one thing I definitely recommend is that you make mistakes and you work through those mistakes. It's really the best way to learn and I wanted to say that I do every time I paint a rock get a moment where I think it's not going to work out and I should stop and when I push through that um, and see what happens often I get something that uh, looks really great and has worked out much better than I expected. And of course, if you don't like what you did, you can just paint over and start again. So here I am finishing off this uh, ladybird rock. And then I'm going to spray it with a spray sealant. You don't have to do this, but if you're going to put your rocks outside, um, then you do want a, a clear acrylic sealant spray. Um, again, there'll be some links in the information below. I'd also suggest that if you think you're going to put your rocks outside and there's going to get a lot of sun, you get a spray sealant with UV protection, like the one I'm using here. It's a bit more expensive, but it's definitely worth it. So you've got your final finished rock and here we are placing the rock back outside where people can enjoy them. Thanks really very much for watching my video. I hope you've learned something and get inspired to give it a go as well.